Hey folks, we're talking about cyclic groups and I wanna remind everybody that, that not every group is a cyclic group. So even though we're, we're studying cyclic groups, don't think of, of cyclic groups as an arbitrary group. They're a very, very particular type of group. So the integers are cyclic since, you know, the cyclic subgroup generated by one is equal to all of the integers. Because I can add one to itself many times to get any positive integer, and then you know take the identity which is included in any cyclic subgroup uh, to get zero, and then add the inverse of one or negative one to itself many times to get all of the uh, negative integers. I should say, um, maybe I'll say for integers. Um, The group of integers is cyclic. Okay. Z mod n z is cyclic for any integer n, since also one generates z mod n z. Okay. Um, yeah. The cyclic subgroup generated by one inside of z mod n z is all of z mod n z. And our last video showed that you have potentially more generators as well any number relatively prime to n is a generator of z mod n z. Okay, but let me remind you that not every group is cyclic. And I wanna drive home the point of, of showing your group that's not cyclic. We'll look at this group of symmetries of the square in 3D. So this group has eight elements. It has a rotation by zero degrees, which just maps it to where it is. You can rotate by 90 degrees. You can rotate by 180 degrees. You can rotate by 270 degrees. And then you can flip across this horizontal line. You can flip across this vertical line. And then there are two different diagonal flips, which I'll call D and D prime. So you could do this flip D or this flip D prime. And all of these symmetries map the square on top, back onto itself. So let's look at all of the cyclic subgroups. If I rotate by zero, no matter how many times I repeat that operation, I just stay where I am. If I rotate by 90 degrees, I could generate all of the rotations, but nothing else. I can't generate any of the flips. When I rotate by 90 once, or twice, or three times, or four times. Okay, when I rotate by 180 degrees, I just get the rotation by 180 degrees, and then I get the identity back again. And when I rotate by 270 degrees, I get all of the rotations, but nothing else. So now let's look at the sub cyclic subgroups generated by the four flips. When I flip across the horizontal axis, I get the horizontal flip, but then when I do it again, I get the identity. And that's the same pattern for all the flips. Do the vertical flip once, you get this vertical flip, but do it again and you get back where you started. The identity. Same for this diagonal flip. Do it once, you get the diagonal flip, do it again, you get back to the identity. And lastly, for the other diagonal flip, do it once, you get that diagonal flip D prime, but do it again and you get the identity back. 
So since none of these cyclic subgroups is equal to G, That is why G is not cyclic. All right, and the point of this video again is to remind you all that, yeah, we're, we're studying cyclic subgroups, which are very important. We're studying cyclic groups, which are very important, but they're also very simple. Don't think every group is cyclic. Um, most groups you meet are not cyclic. Thanks. <laughs>